Today, we're going to look at the seatbelt sling, a simple design that consists of some webbing and some cordage tied together with some simple knots. Later in the video, I will show you how to construct one of these slings. But for now, let's take a look at some of the features. For those of you who are new to slinging, a sling consists of some simple features, a finger loop, a retention cord, a pouch, and a release cord. In this case, terminated with a knot. With the ability to be constructed from a large range of different materials in various sizes and variants of pouch design, including both split and solid pouch designs, the seatbelt sling can be customized to a user's individual needs. Okay, now let's build one. You will need some scissors, a lighter, some cordage, some webbing, some thinner cordage for connecting the webbing, and to get everything tight, some pliers, and a measuring tape to make sure everything's the right length. Not all materials are created equal. The weight, length, width, thickness, stretch, Flexibility and texture all contribute to the characteristics and performance of the individual sling. One major difference between the sling design is that of a split pouch or a solid pouch. The split pouch has a slit in the middle, allowing it to form around the projectile, whereas the solid pouch is just that, solid. So let's start the build. Take your webbing and measure out a suitable length. I'm going to cut mine at approximately 7 inches, which is suitable for a tennis ball, creating around a 6 inch pouch after the tie ends. Remember, always measure twice and cut once. This style of seatbelt sling is suitable for a large range of projectile sizes, although optimised for a tennis ball. Tennis balls are a great ammunition for beginners, they're cheap easy to find and good fun with your dog. Remember, always practice slinging in a suitable area. Now, once you've got the webbing cut, all you need to do is singe the ends with the lighter. Kids, ask your mum. Okay, at this point you should have some webbing ready. If you're building a solid pouch, you'll have approximately a seven inch piece. If you're building a split pouch, you'll have double that, approximately a 14 inch piece folded in half to make a seven inch pouch. Take note on the way that the split pouch is folded. At this point, I wanna take a closer look at the tie-ins. On the left, we have a solid pouch and on the right, we have a split pouch. The left sling is folded in an M configuration the right sling is folded in a U configuration. An M configuration consists of a fold in half, which is also a U configuration, but afterwards you put an extra fold on the edges, or you can fold it this way by folding the edges in and then bending them back on themselves to create an M. The cord will sit in the middle of the M on the top side. Design feature isn't inherent to a solid or a split pouch, but more it's defined by the width and thickness of the cords. Sometimes you will end up using an M configuration for certain split pouches, but in general, if the webbing is wide, you will use an M configuration. And if the webbing is not as wide, you'll use a U configuration. But again, this depends on the combination of webbing and cord types that you use. Sometimes the thickness of the webbing can prevent you from doing a U bend completely. These types of webbings aren't ideal to be used. This is about the limit that I would want to use. Two folded over together and still enough room for the cord to fit inside. 
the width, length and thickness of the webbing will contribute to how much cupping will happen in a split pouch design. Now that your webbing's ready, it's time to prepare your cord. Take a loop, and once you have the loop, pass the end of the cord through the loop twice. One time is a granny knot. Two times is a double fisherman's loop. This is a suitable knot for most types of cordage and cinches down really tight. Make sure you dress the knot so that it looks like this. Now you have your cord ready, it's time to attach it to the webbing. If you're doing a split pouch, start with the folded side. I like to make the folded side the finger loop side or the retention side. For this, we'll do be doing a U-bend. Make sure the webbing is folded equally. Now take a small piece of cordage and hold one end in the hand that's holding the webbing. From there, proceed to wrap backwards towards the hand that's holding the webbing, making sure each wrap is neat and next to the last. Once you have several wraps, pass that end underneath all of those wraps so that it pops out the opposite end, exposing both ends of the short piece of cordage. Once both ends of the cord are exposed, you'll be dressing a nail knot. This knot is very useful in sling building and one to remember. Once you have it all set in place, make sure that you can wrench down on it really tight from both directions before pulling on the retention cord. This is not the only way of tying on the sling, but allows you to do repairs later on if necessary. It's also a cool way to add some colour to your sling. Once everything's well dressed, all you need to do is wrench down on everything tightly with a pair of pliers. Pull hard on either side of the tie-in point or nail knot, and then set the line in place by pulling hard on the retention cord or release cord if you're up to the second cord. By this point, you have learned all the fundamentals of building a seatbelt sling. It's a simple design that only requires two or three different knots, a fisherman's bend, a nail knot, and if you want a loop for the finger, maybe a bowline. Everything can be cut down and cleaned up. Again, if you're a child and you're using a lighter, maybe ask a parent to do it. Again, I will show you this process except using an M configuration. So now we take the cord again with a knot, we place it in the webbing and we fold it in half. See, it will pull straight out. A U configuration won't work. So we need to do an M configuration. This configuration is very useful when using wider webbing. It allows it to be held tightly onto a thinner cordage. However, if using a thicker cordage, you may not find an M configuration necessary with a wide webbing. It's all in the combination of what you use. Again, to tie the nail knot, start with one end of the cord in the hand that's holding the webbing and wrap backwards towards that hand. Again, keeping all of the wraps nice and neat. With an M configuration, be sure that everything is nice and neat. If the M isn't even, you will find that it pulls hard to one side of the pouch. This is not ideal. You want it to be centralized and even on both sides, especially with a solid pouch. Again, to finish the nail knot, just pass the end underneath all of the wraps that you have made making sure everything is well dressed and that both ends of the cord are still exposed. These ends are what you will grab onto when you tighten everything down. Making sure everything is neat and tidy, take some pliers and wrench down on the tie-ins. 
Do this before pulling on the retention cord, as pulling the retention cord out at this point is more than annoying. You can neaten everything up by snipping the ends with scissors and singeing them with a lighter. Again, kids, if this is out of your realm, ask a parent. To finish it off, all you need is a knot on one side and a finger loop on the other side. A simple knot to learn is a bowline. Make a loop, pass the cord through the loop, around the back and then back into the loop. This is a simple knot that you should be able to find online if my tutorial doesn't do it justice. So there you go. By now, you should hopefully have a seatbelt sling that looks something like one of these. Two, one.